Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about another class of antibiotic that is completely different from what we previously discussed in penicillins and cephalosporins, which is sulfonamides. We will understand how they work, their nature and structure, as well as their structure activity relationship. Let's start with the mechanism of action. Sulfonamides act as competitive enzyme inhibitors of the dihydropteroate synthetase and block the biosynthesis of tetrahydrofolate in bacteria cells. So they belong to nucleic acid synthesis inhibitor class. This figure here shows the biosynthesis of a nucleic acid in bacteria. At the very beginning, the dihydropteroate synthetase combines two molecules, which are dihydropterin diphosphate and paraaminopenzoic acid, or PABA, to form dihydropteric acid, which is a precursor of tetrahydrofolic acid or tetrahydrofolate. So sulfonamides target this enzyme here, which is very important for the bacterial growth and division due to its essential role in the synthesis of bioremidine nucleic acid bases required for DNA synthesis. If this enzyme is inhibited, the bioremidine and the DNA synthesis will be blocked as well. Hence, the bacteria can no longer grow and multiply. This last sentence must ring a bell to you, that sulfonamides are bacteriostatic in a state of bactericidal because they don't actively kill the bacteria in a state they suppress the development only. Then what makes these drugs able to bind to the enzyme here and prevent this process of forming DNA? The answer lies in the structure of these drugs. Sulfonamide mimic PAPA, the natural substrate for the dihydropteroate synthetase. As you can see in this figure here, these two molecules have slightly different functional groups. So here is the PABA and here is sulfa drugs. Although they have a few differences in structure, they still achieve exactly the same bonds and interaction with the enzyme. So both of them, they bind through ionic bond both of them have van der Waal interaction with the enzyme as well as hydrogen point. Because sulfonamides have similar enough structure to PAPA, the enzyme is fooled into accepting sulfonamide into its active site. You can think of them as identical twins in which they might have very few differences but you still can distinguish between them. The same thing happens with the enzyme. When sulfonamides are present in enough quantity, they irreversibly bind to the target enzyme and occupy the active site, thus preventing BABA binding. As a result, the dihydropteroate is no longer synthesized. One might ask, what if sulfonamide quantity was not enough to compete and prevent PABA binding? This, in fact, is how resistance acquired in some organisms against sulfonamides. As you might already know, in competitive inhibition, binding to the enzyme depend on both the quantity and the affinity. Affinity refers to the ability of binding to the enzyme. 
higher the affinity, higher the chance of binding. And more the substance available, more the binding as well. So even if standard dose of drug is used, these bacteria will form lots of baba that actively compete with sulfa drugs and prevent them from reaching the enzyme active site. Also resistance arise by mutations that modify the enzyme active site such that it has less affinity to sulfa drugs so they will bind less strongly to the enzyme while PAPA binding will take place a lot. Moving forward to the structure and structure activity relationship of this class. As shown, the general structure of sulfur drugs have three main parts. First, the amino group. So an amine, also an aromatic ring and sulfone amide functional group. All sulfur drugs share key features in order to obtain their optimal activities, which include both the sulfone amide and the aromatic ring are essential for the activity, so they must be present in all sulfonamides. Also, in the benzene ring, you can see the para amino group attached here, which is also important for the activity and must be unsubstituted. So that means R1 should be a hydrogen. The only exception is when R1 is an acyl. So this is an exception. For example, it can be an amide. Amide themselves are inactive, but can be metabolized in the body to regenerate the active form, the unsubstituted amine. So we can say that amides can be used to form sulfonamides prodrugs. So whenever you see an amide on the amino group attached to the benzene, you immediately say that the sulfonamide is a prodrug. On the sulfonamide, the nitrogen can be primary or secondary it can't be tertiary, so not tertiary. And both the sulfonamide and the amino group must be directly attached to the benzene. And the aromatic ring must be para-substituted only, as extra substitution will eliminate the activity due to steric reasons. So we can conclude that R2 in the sulfonamide functional group is the only possible site that can be varied in sulfonamide. However, it was found that R2 variation affects the pharmacokinetic properties of the drugs, um, for example, the binding to plasma protein or the extent of solubility of these drugs in GI fluids, rather than the mechanism of action itself. This is the end of this video. I hope you find it helpful. And if you have a question, please leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.